You goldfish! Goat! Get me this fire in the bush and then let me down. You must be near human to be as treacherous as that. Be going into Indian River, would you? Yes. Would you like to give me a ride? Yeah, thanks. This dang thing went and got itself busted back in the bush, like a cousin of mine. <laughs> we was kids together about 95 years ago. Oh, he had a genius for getting me into trouble. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Muscle! Hey, these look good. Where are we going to put them? One inside, one out, with lights all over them. Okay. Hey, look at that. It's Mr. McLeod. Hey, let's go and see him. Hey. But there's work to be done. Oh, well, I guess that's always the problem with cheap labor. Let's get these set up. Well, much obliged. That walk could have been a little tiring on one leg. I guess I'll see you around sometime. Perhaps. Well, so long for now. Marshal! Mr. McClough? Hey. Oh, hi, kids. Just wait till I get these gall darn things off. You come into town for Christmas, Mr. McCloud? Oh, I might stay around town a couple of days. Pretty quiet back in the bush at this time of year. You get an old bunk or something I could occupy in that fort of yours? Sure, no problem. Well, I might just take you up on that. Say, why don't we go inside and buy you ranger kids a Christmas present? I don't recall giving you one this year. Hey, can't a fella get no service around here? Hi, Mr. Johnson. Oh, hi, kid. Well, I can see where I've got some pretty big business coming my way today. Yeah, I'll take a couple of these. Well, it's a start. They're five cents each. Yeah, you can uh, split this between uh, both of you. It don't look like so much, but it'll last a mighty long time if you take care of it. Gosh, thanks, Mr. McLeod. My pleasure. Ten cents. Ten cents. Say, uh, that's a mighty nice-looking timepiece. <laughs> I might just give that to me for Christmas. Well, that's too bad. See, Mike Brannigan spoke for it yesterday. He's coming in to pick it up around noon. I'll take it off your hands right now. Oh, I'd... I'd hate to disappoint Mike. Still, if he don't come, we might do a deal. It's only 20 bucks. Yeah, well, you're fine. Well, in the meantime, there's still 10 cents outstanding. Yeah, 10 cents. Yeah. Yeah. 
ten cents. Yeah. Hey, say, son, uh, you don't happen to have a spare nickel that uh, you don't have no immediate use for. Sure. I've been trying to figure out for a couple of days what I could use this one for. Ah. Here you are. Ten cents. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you come in. Can I help? My name is Amick. I come from the east. I would like to make a fur path and lay out a trap line. Aren't you a bit late for that? Perhaps, but I hope not. I'm afraid my quota is filled and I can't give out any more permits. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. Maybe I go a little further west. You might have a better chance. All right, I go. Thank you. You've been very kind. Look, I'd like to do more. Why not stay around for a couple of days? You don't want to travel over Christmas. I'm sure I can find you a bunk somewhere. And Indian River's a friendly sort of place. All right. We see how today goes, eh? Fine. And if you feel like staying, you just let me know. <laughs> OK. I tell you. Ever seen him before, Joe? Nope. Must have come from somewhere out east if he picked up old McLeod in the way. Yeah, a long way out east, I think. How come? Well, that dog team of his has been traveling. Ah, oh, come on. We still got the lights to fix. Hi, stranger. What can I do for you? You let me stay by this a little? Sure, help yourself. Get warm. Say, would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, you're very kind, but please, I don't want to give you trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. It's already waiting. You just stay right there. Is anybody looking after this dump? Oh. It's you again. Sure. Any idea what time of day it is? It's a quarter past noon. Why? Hey, it looks like Brandon don't want it. I guess somebody else will come along. Dead right. Somebody else already has come along right now. Somebody else with 20 bucks in his pocket? Well, I got a charge account, haven't I? As a matter of fact, you have. Now, I didn't want to mention it at this time of the year, but now that we're talking about it, it's been climbing pretty high for the last six months, and I think it's about time it came down a little. Yeah, another 20 bucks isn't going to make much difference. Well, there ain't going to be another 20 bucks. You need grub and new shoes, and I don't mind staking you for stuff like that, but not for something like this. You just think I can't pay. I don't want to make things any more difficult. You knew something. 40 years I've been searching for gold up in that valley of mine. Forty years, getting closer and closer to it. And right now, I'm no more than a hop, skip, and a jump away from finding it. Well, that's just fine, Mac. And when you find it, you come down here and buy out the whole store and charge it to your account. You take a pretty commercial view of things. Yep. <laughs> on my charge account, in case you forgot McCloud's the name.
Say, uh, you got to be around town for a couple of days. Today, tomorrow, and then who knows? Well, uh, maybe you could do me kind of a favor. I, I was going to give me this watch uh, for a Christmas present, but it ain't Christmas yet, and I figure it might be kind of unlucky to have it around right now. I understand. Uh, yeah, well, you, uh, you just give it to me to tomorrow, Christmas, huh? I take care of that for you. Yeah, yeah. You're a pretty nice guy. Well, I I'll be seeing you. So you think McLeod came back into your store and stole the watch? Well, it looks kind of like it. Well, you were out of the store for five minutes. Could anybody else have come in? Sure, but Mac had kind of a thing about that watch, and he was, he was right there. Uh, certainly doesn't look too good. You want to make a charge? No, I don't want to, but I run a business. I can't afford to have people coming in, picking up $20 of the goods anytime they feel like it. I agree, and if he gets away with this, it could be worse the next time. Well, that's what I want to make sure of, that there just isn't going to be a next time. Look, let me talk to him. Uh, scare the pants off him. If he admits it and hands back the watch and promises to be a good boy, that's all you want, isn't it? Sure. Well, uh, I guess all we have to do now is find him. Then there was this other Christmas time I'll never forget. I was running a reindeer ranch way up in Alaska. Say, that's a very nice cup of coffee. You want some more? You never say no to a good thing. Sergeant Scott. Say, if you got some kind of a back door around here, I got some very important business to transact. I must have forgot. Hold it, Mac. I want to talk to you. You mind if I come in, Joe? I ain't going to say nothing until I talk to my attorney. You've been looking at too much television. I just want you to come along with me and we'll have a little talk. Are you accusing me of something? Not yet. Hey, wait a minute. What's he supposed to have done? Now, now, don't hold it, son. Don't never tangle with the law. They always seem to be on the side of the big battalions. The law's not on any side. Do you want to search my package right out there? No, thanks. Oh, I suppose you think I've had time to get rid of it. Well, it's not so easy for a fellow to get rid of a watch. A watch? Uh, or something. Come on, let's go and we'll talk about it. Remember, in this country, a fella is innocent till he's proven guilty. Sure, let's go. I ain't gonna say nothing until the trial. Fine. Sorry, Joe. Well, for Pete's sake. It's gonna look pretty good. You think we ought to be doing this? Why not? Well, it's kind of a government office. Maybe there's some regulation. Forget it. This isn't the time of year to worry all that much about regulations. You fellas, what happened? What about? Mr. McCloud's been arrested. Arrested? Well, it's about time. I guess he didn't expect to get away with it forever. Get away with what? You don't know anything about it. Chubb, what happened? Sergeant Scott picked him up at Joe's place. Something about a watch. I bet he pinched that from the store. Now, don't you jump the gun, young Mike. I kind of hoped you'd be alone. So we could chat about the latest crime wave? They tell me you've arrested McLeod. Not exactly. I just told him not to leave town. What's the difference? And anyhow, couldn't it have waited until after Christmas? We were just trying to scare him. He's a pig-headed old roughneck, and he just won't scare. Should have known that. And he's no thief. Should have known that, too. Well, if you pinched the watch, doesn't that make him a thief? Who said he pinched it? Well, Sergeant Scott wouldn't arrest him unless he was pretty sure, would he? Now, just a minute. Let's try and be reasonable. We want to keep this thing down to scale. It seems there's no doubt he lifted that watch. But Charlie Johnson doesn't think he meant any harm, just that he's got an odd kind of sense of humor. He sure has. Oh, get lost, Pete. Hey. Pete. All we want to do is get the watch back. But that crazy old coot won't even open his mouth, except to say, I ain't gonna, which means he isn't going to talk. You just went about it the wrong way. Oh, you think so? Arresting him? It seems to me to show a singular lack of charity on Christmas Eve. 
charity my foot. Look, there happens to be a law in this country. The Christmas spirit seems to be wearing a little thin around this neck of the woods. RCMP, Sergeant Scott. Oh, hi, George. What can I do for you? All right, uh, thanks a lot, George. I'll have to give it some thought. That was George Keeley giving me what I believe is called a tip-off. I can guess why, and I don't like it, but I can't ignore it. Was there anybody else in your store today around noon? Sure, the, uh, the Indian with the dog sled and come into the store to get warm by the stove. I gave him a cup of coffee. Was he alone? Part of the time. His pack and bedroll are still on his sled. Keeley wants me to look through them. Oh, now, wait a minute. He's a pretty nice guy. There's, there's something about him I like. Now, he didn't take that watch. I'll swear he didn't. I've got to check up. The fact that he was there alone is important. Do you know where he is now? Sure, I just left him. He's sitting by the stove. I gave him another cup of coffee. And you go right back there. Make sure he doesn't leave, all right? Okay, if you say so. Everything okay? Everything. Would you like some more coffee? No, thank you. You've been very kind, but now I think it's time for me to go. Uh, look, do me a favor, will you? If I can. Would you wait around here for a couple of minutes? Till the sergeant comes. That's right. He won't be long. Uh, I'll go see if I can fix us some coffee. What did you say? You uh, don't want me around? Not right now. I'll go see if I can get us some coffee going. You mind telling me your name? I'm Mick. Nothing else? Nope. You gonna stay around for a day or two? I was just leaving town, but Mr. Johnson asked me to wait for you. Did you ever see this before? Yes. You know where I found it? In my bedroll. How did it come into your possession? I took it. You stole it. Well, I'm sorry about this, but there isn't too much I can do to help. I'm sorry you were given trouble. Is there any service around this dump? Hey. You're looking at me kind of suspicious-like. You figure I'm going to make a break for it? You don't need to. You're free to go whenever you want. How come? There won't be any charges. But if it ever happens in the future, just open your mouth and talk. Save everybody a lot of trouble. Well, let's go. Hey, what's going on around here? Seems like the Indian took that watch. He did? Well, don't mind me. Say, how'd you like to give me a pack of smoking tobacco? And put it on my charge account? Speaking terms again? Sure. Okay. Merry Christmas. How's the prisoner? I've been just asking him what he wants for his Christmas breakfast. I've been trying to figure out some way of letting him go within the law. Let's go in my office and figure it out over some coffee. Fine. Oh, 
Merry Christmas. Did I say my office? Well, it's only one day in the year. What are you doing here at this time of morning, you old reprobate? Well, kind of looking for him, I guess. Well, I didn't think you wanted to see me again for a long time. Well, I got a kind of confession to make. Oh, no. Yeah. You stole the watch. I didn't steal it exactly. I just kind of took it. I told that storekeeper fella to put it down on my charge. Uh, maybe I didn't tell him loud enough. I guess he didn't hear me. Well, how did I make get hold of it? Well, I, I gave it to him to keep for me till Christmas. Well, he was about to leave town. He would have gotten away with it if you hadn't called. Me? On the telephone. Just after I left here yesterday. In a bad temper, remember? I haven't talked to you on the telephone for days. Well, now, look, you told me I might find the watch in the Indian's bedroll. You've been dreaming, brother. Well, then who did? They're not me. Amick. Nobody else knew where the watch was. Well, why would he do that? Maybe he wanted to frame himself. Frame himself? Why? Because it's Christmas? You mind if I come back for that coffee? Anytime. I got a feeling I'd like to go over and give friend Amick his breakfast and turn him loose on the world. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, this is a nice, snug little place you got here. Oh, thanks. Too bad we couldn't find him. You yeah, find who? Emma, we just thought we'd tell him he could stay here in the fort overnight if he wanted to. But we were too late. Seems he moved on. Yeah, traveling man. I guess he doesn't stay in any one place too long. Well, he stayed around Indian River for a time after Sergeant Scott let him out. Then he kind of disappeared. Nobody seems to know where. Or where he came from, or who he really is. He... I guess you were kind of getting close to a clue to that this morning, when you talked about Christmas. Well, it was just an idea. Hmm? You might have been right, son. Maybe he's just a guy that goes to and fro in the world, getting old sinners like me out of trouble. Yeah, I guess we'll never be sure. Hey. Any of you kids like a wiener? <laughs> <laughs>